are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. It's achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs all that we are going through today. And I'm just going to throw my little topic in. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. In this chapter that we're just reading from, these verses, the apostle, he was trying to encourage and give courage and let them know that we must have patience and endure on the great suffering. Christ had taught them before he went away that in this world you will have tribulation. So that has become common to many of us today. Yet we have a great relief and we know that our help is on the way. We are as the apostle was back there. They were troubled, the scripture says on every side, afflicted in many ways. They were in we need and are going through all sorts of troubles. Yet we are not distressed. That's in 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. But through it all, we can see and know that our help is coming from the Lord. Yes, we are perplexed. I just like to be honest, you know, a lot of times ministers and Christians and people that are saved want to make it look like they're not going through anything and they're not feeling anything, but sometimes we are perplexed. You can hardly watch the news without getting perplexed. Sometimes we are uncertain about the things of the times and about what will become of us on tomorrow, but we are not distressed. Yes, we even get anxious at times. You know, you get a little antsy, a little anxious. You are not calm as you should be. But we are not in despair. Even in our greatest perplexities, we know God is able to support us, deliver us, and we know that we must put our hope and that fact. This afternoon I'm saying help is on the way. We have been persecuted by men. We as a people have been persecuted by men. For we have been, um, sometimes our friends have disappointed us. We have been hated and pursued by people that feel sometimes that we are not even worthy of life. Sometimes our spirits are fearless. There is still fear within us. And even though inside we are fearful, sometimes we are still fighting on the outside. Yes, sometimes we are afraid, but we continue to fight. For we are God's people, and we will not be destroyed. And we understand and know that our help comes from the Lord, and help is on the way. Now, 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 reminds us that our faith is what kept our forefathers before us. Our faith is what kept some of our parents before us. Our faith is what kept them from falling. So that same faith, that 
same spirit of faith is able to keep us from falling. Yeah. A good Christian will not fear death because a good Christian knows to die in the hope of the Lord. We have the hope and the joy of a resurrection. Every one of us has an inner and an outer man, a body and a soul. The outward man must and will perish. That's a fact. The outer man will, because he was made for this, he will get sick, he will get weak, he will decay. That's this body, isn't it? But the inward man, the soul, there's something inside of me that says, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Even though the outward man might be decaying, the inward man needs to be renewed every day. So for the wicked man, things get worse day by day. But for the godly men, we know that things get better day by day. The prospect of eternal life keeps us from falling. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. We don't see it right now, but we call it as though we see it. Because we got our eyes fixed on what will be. A lot of what we're seeing, even in the streets today, the, even the pandemic that we're going through, even the police officers that are killing minority people, uh -huh. amen, because of the color of their skin, even though the young men, minority, especially, are going to jail in a, uh, just an unbelievable amount compared to the other men, uh -huh. amen? Our men are going to jail sometimes three times or four times as much simply because of the color of their skin yeah. and the other part is because they can't obtain the, the right lawyers. They don't have enough money. So finances sometimes is the quest, the problem. Yeah. But I came to tell you that I believe help is on the way. Yes, it is true sometimes that um, you know, uh, even with, I, I know some cases even with black men they go to jail and even the lawyers that are given them will convince them you need to take this deal. Spend 10 years in jail. Uh -huh. Because you actually don't realize it, but the world doesn't see you as counting. The world doesn't see you as worth something. So that's how come the lawyers will sit there, they're going to make their money anyway. Amen? Amen? But we must not stop. We must stay in the race. We can't give up. We've got to keep hope alive. We've got to understand that most of what we see from day to day is only temporary. And help is on the way. And much of what is not seen, that is what is eternal. We know that our troubles are temporary. We know that the change is going to come. We know that we know that there's some people that are going into why do we know things are going to get better? Why do we know help is on the way? Because we know there are some people that are going into their secret closets and they are on their knees and they are praying to God. Yes. And we do know that there's also some people that are out in openly prayer. And we know that prayer changes things. Amen. So we know that no matter what it looks like, help is on the way. And as we know, Romans 8 and 28 tells us, for we know, we know that all things work together for the good of them that allow the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Do you love God this afternoon? Amen. Do you love God? Do you believe you're called according to his purpose? According to his purpose, not our plan. 
Well, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 tells us, for the end of the matter is that all has, for the end of the matter is all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31 says, whether ye eat or drink, do it all for the glory of God. So no matter what you're doing, it's got to be for God's glory. Amen. Do it all for the glory of God. Isaiah 43 and 21 says, the people, the people that I formed for myself, this is God, that they might declare my praise. That's your purpose. You're trying to give God some praise. Amen. Amen. We see a lot of things today, and I understand we got to fix ourselves up and we got to look good. But sometimes we're taking everything away from God. Amen. Uh, Psalms 156 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everything that has breath praise the Lord. So, with this in mind, we can begin and we can continue and we can conclude without a doubt today that help is all the way. No matter what it looks like, and we're not just talking about in one thing, there's a lot of things going on in our lives. But help is on the way. I don't know about you, but um, there are some days that I, myself, can get up and I just don't feel like God is with me. Amen? Amen. Or do you feel like God's with you every day? Amen. We don't feel like it. We just know He is. Amen. Amen. There are some days when I look around and the words of that song, you have to wonder sometimes, and you have to wonder, is God with you? But don't worry about what it looks like. Just know that the word of God tells us that He is with us. And it seems like you uh sometimes people feel like they've been dealt a bad hand in life. Sometimes they feel like they just started off on the wrong side of the bed. Sometimes it seems like the only scripture in the Bible that makes any sense to us is the one that says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. And then but troubles in my way, I may have to cry sometime, but somebody said Jesus will fix it after a while. Yes, sometimes, amen, our mouths are saying the song, but our hearts are far from it. Amen? amen. But do you believe Jesus will fix it? Yes. Do you believe that help is on the way? Amen. Years ago, March 25th, 1965, in Montgomery, Alabama, on the steps of the Capitol, that's when Dr. Martin Luther King, he gave that great speech and he asked the question, how long? How long? And then he asked Eric his own question. He said, not long. Well, at that time, they had walked 54 miles from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama. But they kept on walking. They kept on praying. They kept on believing that help was on the way. The demonstrators, I mean, they uh, had to uh, do many things and things were thrown at them and thrown in their face. But they were walking. And they was believing, and the voters' rights is what came into play at that time. That's why we need to vote. Amen. Amen. It's sad that people died so we can vote, and we don't vote. And then another time, you know those different stories. But what am I trying to say? Martin Luther King said, help is on the way. And he said, how long, not long, why? Because our God. He said, our God is marching on. I don't think. Sometimes that I can understand any more than anybody else can understand, but I know that my help is on the way. So that's why I said this afternoon in that song, I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free. God's eyes are on the sparrow, and I know his eyes are on me. I can hear the words of the song crystal clear, and I can hear the words saying, help is on the way. Be still, my child. Don't fear, I am with you, I am here. Help is all.
Because that's God's law of gravity. How long? All we have to do is to hold on just a little while longer. And when you can't hold on, hang on. When you think you're going to let go, hold on by your little fingers. Amen. Hold on. Because this battle is not yours. This battle is the Lord's. Psalms 46 and 1 tells us that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. It says, I've seen your tears and I've heard your cries. That's what the scripture says. God said your help is on the way. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but looking at the, someone even said, and I've been trying to do it, turn it off the news and go back into the secret closets, not to believe what we see, but to believe what we know God will do. God still says in Psalms 23 and 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I know, I don't think I know that God is with me. Amen. Psalms 27 and 3 says, though an army besieges me, my heart will not fear. Though my, amen, though war breaks out all around me and against me, in this will I be confident. Psalms 56, 3 and 4 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in God, whom I praise. Amen. So that's why no matter what's going on, I say hallelujah. Anyhow, I don't let my problems get me down. In God, I trust. That's what that scripture says. Psalms 56, 3 and 4. In God, I trust. I am not afraid. What can man do unto me? Hold on because help is on the way. Hallelujah. But you have to believe it. You have to believe it and you have to understand where we've come from. Our history goes back a long way. And God always has came and took care of things. But while they were going through years ago, they were marching but they were singing. They weren't just walking, but they were singing a song. And I don't know about you, somebody put something on Facebook. Boom, I guess it was a choir, I don't know, it looked like it was about a hundred of them. And they were marching in the streets. And they was and they were singing that song. Um, um Give Me You Lord. And I saw that, and they was going through the streets. And it looked like the Spirit of God was just following that group. And they were saying, I hope we're not too late. Well, in these days right now, I've never seen so many men on TV crying in my life. Everybody's crying and everybody's disgusted and everybody's feeling like what is going on now. But I heard one of the actors, he was one that played Dr. Martin Luther King. And he's from England and he said, did you ever think we need to ask God to forgive us of what we've done for the sins we've done? And then move on from here. Sometimes God just was trying and is trying to get America's attention. Okay. Amen. He hasn't had your attention, but he's trying to say, here I am, remember me. Amen. He, when you don't know what to do, he's still saying, remember me. And then that young, young actor was saying, I think we need to pray and, and, and ask God to forgive us and then start over. I don't know if y'all been watching, but I've been seeing lawyers, doctors, actors, basketball players, everybody in tears. Because they don't know what else to do. And you never heard so many as any time saying, we're going to have to pray. We're going to have to turn to God. We're going to have to ask God. Well, God knows how to get your attention. You are not too big. Yeah. And you are not too bad. Yeah. God knows how to break you down. That's right. We got to remember the scripture says, every knee, must, every knee must, must bow. bow. Yes. Every tongue will confess 
the help is on the way. Yeah. How do we get help? Well, the Bible plainly tells us to ask, and it shall be given. You might know that scripture? Seek, and you shall find. Knock, yeah. and the door shall be opened unto you. Amen. He's waiting on us to ask, Lord, help us, Lord. He's asking for us to seek him, to get back down on our knees and seek God. Stop seeking our own plan. Stop seeking our own ideas and seek God. And then he's saying, if you knock, what you're asking, you're seeking, you're knocking. And you keep on knocking. He said, the door will be open unto you. Hallelujah. Help is on the way. Amen. Amen. But remember, just like when he put the blood over the doorpost back in the Old Testament. Amen. So that that angel wouldn't come by. Anybody remember that story? Well, we've got to ask God to cover us with his blood. Yeah. Amen? Don't just assume that everybody is going to get the same protection. Amen? We have to ask God for his help. Yeah. And he said that he will help us. Amen? And I don't know about you, but I am determined to go through. I am determined to go through. Amen? Amen. I said the other day, when I was driving around and I was driving around with the one eye, I said, Lord, thank you. I can get better and further with one eye than some people can get with two. Amen? Amen. So God is good. Yes. Amen? Amen. I could have been hit, knocked off the road, ran into somebody. Amen. I think I'm having less. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I didn't do it by the goodness of my own. Amen. Yeah. But I had to say, thank God. That I have the little that I do have. I am always and forever grateful for what God has done for me. And I never take for granted that I did it for myself. Amen? Amen. Education can only get you so far. Amen? As we know, money can only get you so far. Amen? But in the end, we are now all crying out, Help, Lord. And the Lord is letting us know that help is on the way. Amen? I'm going to ask everyone to stand at this time. But yes, sometimes the road gets difficult. And I heard someone say there's some difficult days up ahead of us. Amen? Amen? But we have to trust and believe in God. And you know what? When the salt has lost its savor, that's the scripture. Savor. Amen? The salt is the season of the earth. The Christians are the season of the earth. They are like the salt of the earth. They are preserving this earth. So when God pulls them out, amen, and when the earth has lost its Savior, amen, not Savior, Savior, amen, you never miss your water until the well runs dry, amen? So we are glad to be able to be here this afternoon and say, Lord, help us in this time of uncertainty. Lord, help us. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I stand sometimes and go. Yes, I'm having trouble sometimes when I'm reading from a different cat. But amen? But I thank God that I can read at all. Amen? I'm grateful. That's the point I'm trying to make. The older saints didn't have a lot. They didn't know a lot, but they believed God. Amen? And I'll never forget some of their testimonies. We know that God is able. They left good reports. I'm talking about some people we know, not just the biblical characters. And they left good reports of what God could do. God is a witness.
like, what you have to do is acknowledge that you are a sinner and accept Christ as your Savior. Believe that he lived and died and rose again on that third day and now ascended up into heaven and is sitting on the right hand of his Father pleading our case. All you have to do is say, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. He understands. And right where you are, he will save you. Right where you are, he will break the yoke. He will deliver you. He will pick you up. He will turn your ashes into beauty. That's what God will do. And we're asking him, if you ask him to save you, he has saved you. And so now we pray for those that need healing, wherever they may be. Those that are bound up, those that are depressed, God is able. He said, come on and me, all of you of the burden and heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. He's waiting with open arms just for you. So we pray that you will accept him and what he's offering to you. We pray that you accept Christ and then we pray that you believe that he is a healer and a reporter of them that didn't receive him. Lord, we pray that you break this yoke that's trying to overtake us, Lord. That's trying to overtake the world. Lord, we know that you are able, Lord, to break even this pandemic. We are sitting around and we're just settling for the Lord. We need to start calling it in the name of Jesus and to break it. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Loosen up the hearts. Amen. There's evil and wickedness in the hearts. But Lord, we know that you are able to bind up the broken heart as well as heal the evil mind. The Lord God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask all of these blessings in your name.